In this tutorial, we will see how to find the intercept, slope, and correlation coefficient for a simple regression forecast using a calculator. This is a review of material you would have covered in statistics, so I am going to be brief in my coverage since this is just a review. I will show you all the calculations, but I will not be narrating them all. The slide shows the formula for calculating the correlation coefficient. I know it looks very intimidating when you first see it, but, as you will see, it is actually very straightforward to use. For the data shown on the slide, calculate the correlation coefficient. Note that this is the same data we have used for prior forecasting examples. We begin by performing some interim calculations. Before we begin, notice that I have renamed the period column X and the actual column Y. That is just to make them consistent with the formulas used for regression. We first calculate X times Y. For period 1, 1 times 125 equals 125. For period 2, 2 times 130 equals 260. For period 3, 3 times 141 equals 423. The remainder of these values are computed the same way. Next, we calculate x squared. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and so on. Next, we calculate y squared. 125 squared is 15,625. 130 squared is 16,900. 141 squared is 19,881, and so on. Finally, we compute the column totals. The sum of the x's is 55. The sum of the y's is 1,504. The sum of the x times y's is 8,692. The sum of the x squares is 385. And the sum of the y squares is 228,394. The totals along the bottom are all we need to calculate the correlation coefficient. Everything else is just an interim calculation and could be discarded now with no impact on the remaining calculations. Now that we have the column totals and the sample size of 10, we are ready to plug these values into the formula. All three ends are replaced with 10. The sum of the x's, 55, is used in two places. The sum of the y's, 1,504, is also used in two places. The sum of the x times y's, 8,692, is used in one place. The sum of the x squares, 385, is used in one place. Finally, the sum of the y-squares, 228,394, is also used in one place. Performing these calculations, we get a value of 0 0.9876, the same value I gave you in the forecasting tutorial. The slide shows the formula for calculating the intercept and slope. B sub 0 is the intercept, and B sub 1 is the slope. While these formulas also look complex at first, notice that they use the exact same totals that we computed for the correlation coefficient. That means we are ready to do the calculations. We will calculate the intercept first. The formula is shown on the slide. The sum of the x's, 55, is used in two places. The sum of the x squares, 385, is used in two places. The sum of the y's, 1,504, is used in one place. The sum of the x times y's, 8,692, is also used in one place. Performing the calculations gives us an intercept of 122.4. Plugging in the totals and sample size of 10 into the slope formula yields a slope of 5.1. For the data shown on the slide, calculate the correlation coefficient, intercept, and slope. Note that this is the same data we used for the bonus examples in the trend-adjusted exponential smoothing tutorials. Since you've seen an example already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use the video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. The first step is to perform the interim calculations. These are shown on the slide. If you have any mistakes, pause the video and correct them. Otherwise, all of your remaining calculations will be incorrect. Plugging in the values and performing the calculations gives us a correlation coefficient of 0 0.9976. Plugging in the values and performing the calculations gives us an intercept of 236.33. Plugging in the values and performing the calculations gives us a slope of 13.19. If you found that this video helped you with your operations management problem, please consider liking the video and even subscribing to the channel.